G'day. So I thought I'd do a bit of a review on some of the off-road camper trailers that are on the market in Australia. And the reason I thought this might be a good idea is it's really hard to get some unbiased advice about these camper trailers. There are camper trailer magazines, but mostly they don't say anything negative about them. They'll just tell you all the good things and it's kind of up to you to figure out the bad things. Now I haven't used all these camper trailers but I've looked at a lot of them quite carefully, I've looked at the specs and I've thought about it a bit so um, you know take it with a grain of salt but um, perhaps you'll find some interesting advice amongst these. Now um, I'm going to look at a wide variety of different kind of camper trailers but I'm not going to look too closely at what I call the kind of generic camper trailer. And these are the camper trailers such as the one shown here made by Cub. Um, I call them generic because there's many companies who make ones that are very very similar to each other. Some of them sort of fold back with a hard floor, some of them fold forward with a hard floor, some of them um, have a soft floor They've all kind of got the same shape as a low, wide rectangle. The reason I'm not going to look at these is, I guess, just because they don't interest me personally. Not to say that there's anything wrong with them, but um, I just find the design a bit boring, a bit not very um, innovative. Um, to me, they seem too long and unwieldy considering the amount of stuff you can put in them. Um, so they don't appeal to me, but you know, by all means, if you would like one like that, um, go and compare them yourself. But I'm going to compare camper trailers that are a bit different, a bit more innovative, a bit ones that don't just fit into the same mould. So the first trailer I'm going to talk about is the T-Van made by a company called Track Trailer. This has been on the market for more than a decade. It's a favourite of um, the camper trailer community. It's got a reputation for being as hard as nails, off-road, tough. Um, it probably pioneered this style of camper where you can, in such a compact space, you can just open up the back, go to sleep without actually having to set anything up. And you'll find many videos and uh, web discussion forums on the internet that will praise this trailer. And it is a fantastic trailer. Um, but I'm just going to talk about a few of the things that I see as downsides of this trailer. So, first the specs. Um, weighs, uh, sorry, length is 4 uh, 4.9 meters. Height is um, 205 centimeters. So that's that's in terms of its envelope. That's that's pretty big. That's um that's not far off a UEV 490, which is most people think is a much bigger trailer, and it is a bigger trailer. But in terms of the overall envelope, in terms of length, in terms of length and width, um, it's it's bigger than it looks. Uh, weight, tear of the uh, top model is um, 1,075 kilos. These days, in, uh, camper trailers are required to record their tear as their tear, including all the features put in. So 1,075, that's, that's pretty good considering it's a, you know, a sort of caravan style camper. But it's you know it's getting up there in weight. It's it's a lot more than than some of the more basic campers. Uh, the load it can carry is four hundred and twenty five kilos, which is it's not that much. Um, it's, it's it's a bit poor. Now in terms of the style, um, the original track trail uh, camp T van trailers back in the beginning didn't have that pod that you can see at the front of the trailer. Um, so that pod is, is used to keep the your fridge in and there's a bit of extra storage on the other side. And even to this day, that pod is, is actually an optional extra, which I find 
kind of amazing. But if you don't have, if you don't order one with the pod, or you don't have one with the pod, then you have to keep your fridge basically behind the bed. So what what you'll do is when you set up your trailer, you'll you'll probably take the fridge out and put it on the hard floor, or, or perhaps you'll crawl over the fridge. So that's that's kind of not ideal. But if you have the pod, it's better. You've got a proper space for the fridge. But even then, there's not really much storage. There's no storage for food near the kitchen other than the fridge. No space for pots and pans and that sort of thing. So you tend to have to put them in perhaps plastic boxes or something like that behind the bed when you open up the back. So it's it's kind of not ideal in, in the storage situation. That, that's where it's really let down. The other thing about the T-Van is the setup. Now, now you, you've got the option of just opening the back and jumping into bed without setting up the, the tent there. And that's obviously very quick. Now, if you do set up the tent, it's not as quick as you might think. I mean, you, you're probably going to take your 10 or 15 minutes to kind of find a flat space and sort of pull out the tent and sort of peg it down all, all around the edge there. Now, does it take a long time? No, not really. But it can be a bit of a pain. You know, if, you, if you're travelling every day, you, you, you're kind of going to get tired of it. So is it, a, is it the end of the world? No, it's not. But just t- take into consideration that it's not quite as easy to live with as it first appears. So that's what I see as the two big downsides of this trailer. Um, lack of storage both in, in volume and, and in, uh, in, in weight, in kilogram capacity, as well as a bit of annoyance with the setup of that tent. So the next one I'm looking at here is the Pioneer Mitchell. And this one's a relatively recent model. Um, it's obviously a kind of a copy of the T-Van in that the basic shape and the fold-out design is very similar. But if you look carefully at it, what they've actually done is they've taken one of their fairly generic camper vans, the sort of uh, fold-back hard floor type one, and they've modified it. They've um, uh, put the higher roof on it, um, put the T-Van style back on it, and made it into this quite different design. So from the waist down, it's kind of a traditional looking camper van, but then above there, it's it's got the roof like a T-Van. So, specs on this one, 5.3 metres long, so that's, that's really quite long, getting quite long for a camper van now. 205 centimetres high, same height as the T-Van. Tear, 1330, so much heavier than the T-Van, which is 1075. This is, um, what, a good 250 kilos heavier. Available load, 670 kilos, which is, is much, uh, much more generous than the T-Van. Um, so the good thing about this one compared to the T-Van is, is it's got a lot more storage now, which it would want to since, since it's uh, a lot more bigger now than the T-Van. Um, you've got that little pop-up roof, which I guess makes things slightly less claustrophobic. Now the way the tent opens at the back it works a bit differently to the T-Van in that you don't have to peg it down, it's always attached to the floor. So, in a sense, this is good, because that, that's one of the big downsides of the T-Van, is that you have to peg it down, but it then comes with a disadvantage, is that you have to have the tent open. So, if you know it's going to rain, and you know the canvas is all going to get wet, you don't have the option to leave it um, folded up. If you want to get into it, you've got to open it all up, there's no choice. Um, so you've got a lot more storage there, you've got, you've got more drawers, you've got more pods there to keep your stuff in. Um, it's got a lot more features available. Um, but the thing that kind of makes me uncomfortable about this also is, is the weight. Um, if you're going to go for a van that has that much weight, 
I'm not sure should should you move up to something more like the UEV 490 because you you're only a couple of hundred kilos short of the UEV 490 um, and it's going to have a lot more storage and more space. So I'm just a bit uncomfortable about whether that much weight is what I want in a camper van with this many features. And I don't really like the amount of canvas it has, but that's a personal preference. But to me, just a bit too long, a bit too heavy for what it is. But it's a great looking design, so well worth taking a look at. So this, this one's the Vista RV. Uh, they're, this company makes three basic models. They've got the TVK model, which is the ultra short model. This says uh, no storage cabinets in the back. Then they have the standard model, which is the crossover, which has the cabinets in the back of the van. And then there's the X Vista RV XL model, which uh, has, has a little bit more storage still and a bit more space inside. Uh, I don't think it's worth considering the, t the ultra short TVK model. It's just there's no storage in that. Um, but neither of the other two models are good. To my way of thinking, probably best to go for the XL model if you're going to go this way. Um, so, specs on this. So, the crossover is 4.9 metres and the XL model is 5.3 metres. So, um, especially the XL, it, it's pretty long. It's as long as the Pioneer Mitchell. The shorter crossover model is the same length as the T-Van. Uh, height is uh, 2.15 metres, so it's, it's higher than either the T-Van or the Pioneer Mitchell. Uh, tear is 1100 for the crossover and 1220. So 1100 is pretty impressive, that's, that's uh, pretty close to the T-Van. And 1220 for the XL, which uh, is, is not as much as the Pioneer Mitchell, which is quite impressive considering um, the type of van it is. Uh, the load for both these two is uh, 400 for the crossover, 380 for the XL, which is that's not very impressive, so that, that's a bit of a worry, that the load. Um, so the, the style of this one is, is basically a traditional sort of caravan in that there's no massive fold-out tent. There's a, there's a pop top, as you can see, but um, you don't have to deal with the, the big expanse of um, canvas that the T-Van and the Pioneer Mitchell have. And that's a plus and a minus. You know, the, the plus is um, there's no setup time, there's no dealing with large expanses of wet canvas on a wet day. The minus is, you obviously you don't have as much interior space once it's set up. Um, but the but the good thing about this also is that if when you fold the bed up, there's a kitchen table in there. So that that's a that's a very major plus compared to the T van or the Pioneer Mitchell. Of course, the, those those vans have space where you could set a, t a uh, table up in the the uh, ca the canvas extension. But but with the uh, crossover. There's, there's no need for that. You can you can eat in there, then fold the bed down. So the inside's got got quite a lot of storage and kitchen type cabinets. The actual kitchen itself is is outside, like the T van and the Pioneer Mitchell. Uh, the fridge is actually inside, um, so you might consider that a slight disadvantage in that you have to poke your head in through the door to get at it. But I I think that's fine. So out of the T-Van, Pioneer Mitchell and the Vista RV, I think I probably prefer the Vista RV, all things considered. Yes, you have less um, space without the, the side annex, but um, I think I prefer just having everything as a unit personally uh, without bothering with the, the whole fold-out deal. So uh, that's my personal opinion on that. This one is the Travelander Geoconvert, and the reason they call it Geoconvert is they've actually converted a trayback camper, which is a camper that you slide on the back of a ute, into a camper trailer. So what they've done is they've taken their single cab trayback camper, 
built a trailer for it, built a fiberglass to go at the front, and voila, a trayback camper for a ute becomes a trailer. And you can actually take this camper off the trailer and put it on the back of a single cab ute, which I guess is not likely to be something you'd want to do because if you had a single cab ute you would buy the model that goes on a single cab ute without the trailer and um, if you don't have a single cab ute then <laughs> you wouldn't be wanting to take it off but you can if you want to so the specs on this um, length 4.6 meters so it's a bit shorter than any of the models we've seen so far uh, height 1950, so it's also a bit lower than any models we've seen back before. Weight is 1140, so um, that's about the same as the Vista RV. Um, just 50 kilos more than the T-Van, so it's pretty. It's um, pretty light, and but the good thing is the load is 860 kilos. So compared to the T-Van, which only allows you to put in 400 kilos, this lets you put in 860. And that's great, because this thing has a ton of storage. There's just storage everywhere. There's, there's enormous storage in that pot in the front. Inside, there's, there's lots of drawers. Um, at the back is a kitchen with more storage for food. Um, it's got a few innovative features that the fridge is custom made for this model so it's a it's a vertical fridge uh, um, you open the door like a regular fridge and to save weight it's got a special metho burner stove rather than the typical gas stove so that saves a lot of weight you don't need a gas bottle um, the way it opens is quite unique so it's actually got an electric motor and a remote control so when you stop the car you press your little remote control and some whirring, wait 10 seconds and the whole thing is set up which is quite amazing um, I'm just really impressed with the design of this thing um, I love the fact that when it's all closed up it's just a solid cube of camper There's it's just pure storage and yet, when you open it up, you've got quite a large hard floor, quite a lot of area to live in. And there's a small shower annex you can attach to the side, which means that when you actually have a shower, you can get out of the shower and step straight onto the hard floor, no wandering around through the dirt. So everything's really, really well designed. Um, it's hard for me to really pick any real floor with this. Um, you know, it's physical dimensions are smaller than most of the camper vans, it's lighter than almost all the camper vans, more storage, more um, space, it's hard to really think of a downside, um, probably the only downside I can see is, you know, unlike the Vista RV, you do have a lot of canvas there, which, you know, if it's raining that can be a bit of a pain, you've, you've got to fold it away with water on it and perhaps the vague feeling that it's sort of over-engineered with the uh, whole electric opening thing but uh, you can't open it without the electrics if it were to break down but um, but yeah really, really hard to think of too many downsides to this um, really love the model um, if I was going to buy a camper trailer this might be at the top of my list I'm not sure This is the Trayon TMO camper and it's got a similar kind of idea to the uh, Travelander camper in that it's a uh, ute trayback camper which has been converted into a camper trailer and just like the Travelander you can also take it off the back of the trailer and uh, put it on the back of a ute. Um, unlike the Travelander which was a single cab uh, camper trailer. This is actually a single cab slash king cab so you can fit it on a, it's a bit smaller in that you could fit it on a king cab. But in terms of the trailer they've gone a lot bigger than the Travelander. So what they've done is they've put a, a much larger pod on the front and that front pod has actually got a toilet and a shower in there. 
So if you love the idea of some interior type shower toilet, um, then I guess this would impress you. I don't particularly care for that. Um, just personally because I think the way the Travelander has it as an exterior little tent I think is fine. Um, but, you know, some people love their interior toilets, so there's that. Um, just one thing I don't, don't like about this, just as a personal thing, is that the bed folds out to the side such that the bed itself is kind of floating in midair with a, a pole holding your weight up. So this kind of makes the, this just gives me a queasy sort of feeling that when you're asleep you're, you know that there's nothing between you and the ground but uh, a pole, um, unlike Travelander where the bed is actually on top of the actual body of the caravan. Um, the other thing about the tray on campers is that the kitchen is actually inside. Now some people perhaps like this in the feels more like a caravan, more like a house, I guess, if your caravan's inside. But myself, I don't really like that because, you know, there's more of a tendency for um, smells to get into the caravan. And plus, you know, if you drop anything, if you make a bit of a mess, it doesn't just fall on the ground, it falls inside the camper van, so you've got to clean it up. Um... But apart from that, the tray on campers are very well regarded. Lots of people love the, the tray on campers. Sorry, I should have given you the specs on this one. So the weight of the TMO trailer is... Sorry, the length is 5,500. So this is the longest camper so far. That, so that's very long. Height is 2,180. So that's, that's also the highest one we've seen so far. Uh, weight, 1,300 kilos. So that's... That's almost the heaviest one, nearly as heavy as the Pioneer Mitchell. Load ability is 700 kilos, which is pretty good. That's quite impressive. So, so this is a very big trailer, um, mainly because they've they've put that pod on with a shower and toilet. Um, so, lots of people are going to love this one because the interior shower and toilet, um, interior kitchen. Not my style. Not not. I, I don't like some of those details I've just pointed out. But but lots of people are going to love this. So um, yeah. In a future video, I will, by the way, give a comparison of the various Ute Trayback campers and talk about the Trayon Travelander in that context. This is the Patriot camper. They've got two models, the X1 and the X2, the X1 being the larger one. I love the design of these cams, they're so compact. Um, the X2 especially is just so small and tight. They've got a really short drawbar length, which means they, they don't make your vehicle very long. Um, just a solid cube of... Um, camper basically. Amazing how much storage they've got in, amazing how much features they put into them. Very very innovative. Um, specs on this, so for the X1 length is, and I think this is the length with the long drawbar, you will need the long drawbar if you're going to have something like a Toyota Prado with a large barn door open at the back, if you want to be able to open it and not hit the camp, you'll need the long drawbar. So the Patriot X1, length is 3.3 metres, that's so short, by far the shortest of any camper van you'll find. Uh, height, 1900, fairly small. Tear, 865, so much lighter than even the T-Van, so that's um, 250 kilos lighter than the T-Van. Load, 735, that's huge, huge load ability. Patriot X2, 3 metres long, uh, 1.9 high, same height, weight, tear, only 700 kilos, such a lightweight, and load ability can hold 500 kilos, so but both of these ones got a lot of storage, um, a lot of load carrying capacity for such a small um, 
uh, camper van. Uh, the X2 has the option of a rooftop tent instead of the built-in tent. So by default both these campers have a custom designed tent which is a soft floor camper. Uh, and here is what I feel is the big disadvantage of these campers is it's a soft floor camper. Now they're fairly easy to set up soft floor campers. Um, they're a really good design. It just sort of flips over and flips down so They've done a really good job in making it easy, but at the end of the day, it's quite a lot of money to pay for a soft floor camper. So, you know, soft floor campers, they get a lot of dirt on the floor. Um, you know, when it's wet, it's pain because, you know, you know, the canvas is wet. It's wet on the uh, bottom side where it's touching the ground. So this is, I think, where it falls down as a... As a a concept for me. Now the X2 actually has the option of instead of having the normal tent you can have a rooftop tent and I kind of like this idea because the rooftop tent won't actually touch the ground so you just crawl up in there and um, uh, yeah because you're not touching the ground it won't be quite as painful to to, um, to uh, pack away. Um, yeah, I mean, if you if you can survive the thought of a soft floor tent, then just a fantastic camper. But at the end of the day, soft floor tent to put it away, you know, you probably took talking ten, fifteen plus minutes. Um, by the time you know, get it all done, pegged out, and so forth, um, and the pack away is always harder than the put up. Um, yeah, of course they've got the videos on YouTube of them putting it up in three minutes or whatever, but, um, you know, it, it's not going to be as simple as that when it comes to putting it away. So, yeah, lovely product. Not sure I want to be in the software camp business, that's all. Now the Patriot Camp is an Australian made. It has some competitors, mostly South African ones. This is the Mission Trailer. Um, to tell you the truth, I haven't done as much research on these other trailers as I have on the Patriot. Probably just because I think the Patriot's so great that I don't think any of the others are really going to compare to it. But you know, if you're interested in this type of trailer, you should do your research. This Mission trailer, it looks fine, it looks like a good trailer. I know someone who's owned one. Uh, doesn't look as cleverly designed to me. I mean, it looks fine, looks perfectly adequate, but just doesn't uh, look as nicely designed as the Patriot. Um, specs on the Mission trailer, 3.5 metres long, so still pretty short, 1900 high. Tear is 790, so... Um, that's in between the X1 and X2 Patriots and load is a very respectable 710 kilos so nothing wrong with specs, specs look great um, you should look into it if, if you're interested in this type of trail I believe the price is, is not too bad on this one this one here is the Conqueror UEV 310 again looks perfectly adequate but um, doesn't impress me as much as the Patriot. Specs on this is 3700 long, so a um, bit longer than the Patriot, a bit shorter than some of the other vans we've seen here. 1600 high, so it's quite low. Tear 700, very lightweight. Load 700, which is good. So specs look fine, doesn't particularly impress me in its design. Another similar model, Conqueror UEV 345. Um, very similar specs as the 310, um, very similar model. Then here we've got the Conqueror UEV 390, this is a more up-spec version of the same design. Um, looks a lot more luxurious, a lot more features, probably more of a worthy competitor to the Patriot. I haven't looked at it too closely if I was, um, 
seriously considering um, one of these soft law type campers, I'd probably give it a good look compared to the Patriot. Um, so really nice looking camper. Now here I've got something that's really fascinating, the Conqueror UEV 440. I'm just fascinated by this camper trailer design. It's just amazing the way they've squeezed everything into this thing. It's it's kind of like a caravan in that you sleep inside, but it's so small, it's so compact. So the specs on this, um, 4.4 meters long. So apart from the the soft floor type camper like the Patriot this is probably the shortest caravan type one we've seen. Uh, Tear 1350 so the Tear is the same as the Pioneer Mitchell so so it's it's higher than the, the other ones but considering it's a you know all the, the stuff you can fit into it it's just amazing. Load 450 kilos not so impressive um, on that front but but the amazing thing about this thing is this will actually sleep four people. So this is the first camper trailer I've seen so far that can properly sleep sleep, sleep four people. Now of course you can you can sleep um, extra people in say the T van by setting up some beds on the hard floor area. Um, you can set up extra beds in the with the Patriot by you know putting on the extension tent or or even just sleeping on the soft floor. But this is the first one that inside the actual camper you can sleep four people. So that is just amazing in such a small camper. So if you if you have a need, if you've got kids, if you you know you've got to sleep more than two people, um, then this would be one that I would be seriously considering. Um, it's amazing how much storage this thing's got. So many nooks and crannies, so many shelves and, and so on. Uh, I'm just fascinated by, by the design of this thing. I just I just love it. But there are some big downsides. First big downside is um, it's quite claustrophobic in there. Okay, so all, all, all the space for the for both beds comes from folding out little uh, side flaps and ex extension bits. But even so, once you get in there, there's there's just a tiny, tiny little walkway. There's, um, so if you're at all claustrophobic, then this might not be the one for you. The other thing is, okay, you got all these little fold-out bits. You've got a fold-out top, you've got a pop-top, you've got a um, fold-out at the front, you've got a fold-out at the side. Once you've folded them out, you've got to um, prop them up with some sort of... Um, what do you call it, tent peg sort of thing, not tent peg, um, tent pole sort of things that keeps them open. Um, there's a bit more setup to it than, than you think. Um, it's not just a matter of stopping, hopping in the back. Well, actually you can. You can, you can um, sleep in there without folding any of the bits out, actually. If you're only sleeping two people, you could actually um, not fold any of the bits out, just hop in, um, sleep one person uh, sort of horizontally across the front and one person uh, lengthways but you probably have to be very short if you're going to manage that because to get any length with the beds um, you're probably going to have to fold it out so um, you might manage it give it a try I don't know but um, but yeah so there's some there's a little bit, a little bit of setup involved there um, so Fascinated by the design, just, just, I don't know, just very, <laughs> very interesting design, but perhaps a little over-engineered, perhaps a bit too many flaps, a bit too many fold-out bits to really make me want to buy it, but it's interesting. And this one here is the Conqueror UEV 490, so this is kind of a bigger version of the 440. Um, so this one, we're starting to get some serious size here. So 4.9 meters long, 2.4 meters high, so so getting quite high now. Tear is 1550, so this is by far the heaviest one we've looked at so far by 
you know, it's it's a couple hundred kilos more than the, the 440. It's, um, um, you know, a couple hundred kilos more than the Pioneer Mitchell. So getting pretty heavy now. And I believe the load on you can put on this is only 400 kilos. So that's not very impressive in terms of ability to load it up. Design, I just love the design. I mean, it's just... It's just a cute design, sort of this military look, it's just nice, lots of little storage nooks, storage cr nooks and crannies, dr um, you know, little storage hatches, uh, love the design. And the difference between this one and the 440 is you can actually, it's, first of all it's, it's got a dining table inside, um, so you can, you can eat in there basically, and once you fold that flat, then you've got some, uh, a bed where you can sleep in there. And you can sleep in there without having to fold out any of the flaps. So you don't have to fold the top up, you don't have to fold the front out. You can just open the door, go inside, go to sleep. So that, that's a big advantage over the 440. And you can, you can still sleep four people um, by folding the front flap out. Um, Downsides to this, well obviously there's the weight and size of it. Also I believe the beds inside, the ones in the back that you can sleep in without folding it out, are not that long. So if you're tall, um, you might not be able to sleep in there with it, uh, in, the, in the back bed. Now I'm not sure what most people do in this van, do they, do they like sort of keep the back bed, I mean assuming you don't have kids, do they keep the back bed sort of as the dining table set up and then fold out the front bed or, or do they sort of um, put away the dining table and sleep on it? it? might be interesting to ask some owners what they prefer to do. I believe the front bed is longer. Um, you don't have to have your toes sticking out as far. It's, it's a bigger bed, uh, but it's got to be folded out. So, um, Lots to love about this design, uh, but the size, the weight, um, yeah, just not sure I want. To, I would want to go that big, heavy in a camper trailer. I personally would prefer to stick to something a bit more compact. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you were going on a long trip, wanted a bit more luxury, luxuries, um, yeah, worth considering. This one here is the Echo Kavanga, which is basically a clone of the. Conqueror UEV 490. Same layout, four person sleeper, bed and table in the back, another fold out bed in the front. Basically everything's very similar to UEV 490. But from what I can tell in my research, it seems to be a better model than the UEV 490. For one thing, it's kind of more compact. It's only 207 centimeters high compared to 240 centimeters high, so that's a good 23 centimeters lower, which is good for head, uh, good for um, fuel economy, being a bit smaller. Weight is 1380, so it's a good um, 170 kilos lighter. Um, yeah, and from what I hear, the inside bed is a bit longer if you're tall. So, if you're in, if you're interested in this kind of full-size caravan type thing, um, well not full-size caravan, but <laughs> larger larger camper trailer, let's say, um, yeah, I think it might be better than the Conquerors, um, well worth looking into that one, and when you're getting into this weight, I'm, I'm wondering, is it better to go with something like this, or is it better go for going for the Vista RV that we saw early in the video? Um, Difficult choice. I mean, if you've got to sleep four people, then, you know, you've got to go with either the Echo Kavanga or the UEV 490. If you don't need to sleep four people, um, yeah, um, I think I'd probably prefer the Vista RV XL. I mean, it's a bit lighter. I think kind of the storage is probably a bit better laid out. Um, plus it's Australian made. Um, yeah, it would be a difficult decision. Um, I think I'd go with the Vista RV unless you need to sleep the four people, but 
yeah, we'd have to look into that more. This is the Ultimate Explore. It's a very compact and light little unit, only 4250 long, 1800 high and weighs only 850 kilos, so impressively light, made of fiberglass. Um, in, I've seen it in real life, it's a, it seems to be a very solid looking unit. Um, impressively, while the bed folds out sideways, it doesn't need any supports to hold it up, which is um, quite impressive how, how strong it is. Um, to be able to do that. I didn't jump into it to see what happens if you sort of uh, roam, um, jump up and down in the bedroom area so that's a bit of a worry but um, yeah so it seems good. Amazing amount of space inside considering what a small van it is but I've got a very big issue with this camper van which is that you can't get to the kitchen without unfolding the entire van. So if you stop by the side of the road, want to make a sandwich, well, you're going to have to open up the entire camper van to make a sandwich. So even though I'm very impressed by this camper van, um, no, I wouldn't be buying it, I'm afraid. So this is the Drifter Dot 7. So Drifter's an Australian company. They make a ton of very innovative and interesting products associated with camping and four-wheel driving and that sort of thing. Um, and this is uh, one of the top camper models. Um, the Drifter stuff's very innovative. Uh, this model doesn't really appeal to me um, for a couple of reasons. One is it doesn't seem that space efficient to me. Um, you know, there's seems to be a lot of wasted space in, in the shape of the, the camper. And also, um, I don't know, it just sort of seems over-engineered. There's some electrical device which makes those four poles on the corners jack up a little bit higher, maybe 15 centimetres higher, just so that when you fold out the awning you can have a little bit more headroom. So that's clever. Seems a lot of effort to go to just for a tiny bit more headroom. Um, and it's kind of like a um, rooftop tent type setup. Um, seems like a lot of over engineering just for a camper trailer with a rooftop tent, but um, yeah, I mean, it's clever, it's interesting, but I don't think it's for me. So the specs on it is 41.90 long, height 2010, uh, and weight 690. Uh, load is 660. So the thing in its favour is very, very light, 690. Um, load at 660 is fairly impressive. So on that score, it's a, it's a winner. So stepping up to something quite big now. We've got the um, Kimberley Caravan, Caravan with a K. This isn't probably my style in that you're starting to get up into the heavier weights which doesn't personally interest me. But to give them credit, this is only 130 kilos more than the UEV 490 from Conqueror. So you know, you're only a a little bit more than the UEV 490 and you're getting something quite amazing really. Um, length 5190 so you know pretty long, height 20 to 75 pretty high but considering what it is you're basically getting something which is virtually like a full-size caravan and without any canvas so the entire top pops up, um, the back pops out for your bed and it's virtually like carrying like a full-size caravan. You know, you've got a full kitchen interior. Um, yeah, so if you're kind of struggling about whether to get a real caravan or a camper trailer, um, this might be an interesting compromise. Um, personally, it seems kind of over-engineered. I don't, I don't personally like things that have a feel of being sort of over-engineered, but... Um, 
I gotta hand it to them. It's 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 an interesting design. It's it's amazing what it does. Um, yeah. So that brings to an end my little review of camper trailers, and I'm going to declare a couple of winners or several winners. I think the most interesting models here are the Travelander Geo Convert, the Echo Kavanga and the Vista RV XL. If I were in the market for a camper trailer, those would be the three which I'd be looking at more closely. Um, if you have to sleep four people, it's got to be the Echo Kavanga. If you don't have to sleep four people, then I would say Vista RV or Geo Convert. And for me, I think I might go for the Geo Convert because just because I like light and small and compact, that might be my what I'd be looking at. But I'll be looking at all of those closely. I'll be considering them all. Um, like and subscribe. I'll be doing a future video on trayback campers. Um, I'm actually not going to buy a camper trailer, I've decided, because I would prefer to get a trayback camper. And I think on balance, that is a better option than any of these camper trailers, actually. Um, and I'm going to be telling you all the reasons why I think that is the case in my future video. So, subscribe. Um, see you later.